I lift up my eyes to the hill. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where it's coming from my head. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help. My helps come from the Lord. The Lord which made heaven and earth, He says, You will not suffer by foot, by foot to be moved. Lift up your hands as you just wash Blessings of God. So, Spirit of God, cause the word to find a free cause here. Let the word of God find a place in our hearts. Let the word prosper in our lives. And at the end of this service, you take all glory. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus, every one of us. Before you take your seats, just in a moment, just remain standing. Now, uh, your, tes your testimony was born out of your commitment and faithfulness. In the midst of hardship, in the midst of lack, in the midst of want, you could see doggedness, you could see dependency. As a family, still looking unto God. Yes, there are places you were expecting blessings to come. It didn't come from there. It came from where you least expected. I'd like someone to understand this morning. I know there are places where your eyes are. You're expecting some good news. God is a specialist. He does not only come from doors. He can also come from walls. Where there are no doors, God will appear from the walls. <laughs> the apostles were in the upper room after his 
ascension and they were afraid and the Bible says and Jesus came through the walls and he said peace be unto you I mean not the doors were shut windows shut but he came through the walls good news for someone here this day so there is still hope for you this year will not end there is still hope for each and every one of us here mind boggling testimonies will come forth from the throne of grace testimonies that when we see it we hear it we can't trace any human effort men may want to do it and take the glory but God will appear from nowhere. Now he said, Thus says the Lord in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 17. He said, You may not see rain, and there will be no wind, but every valley shall be filled with water. How can that be? It's only God that can do it. And this morning he's going to start with you. I said, He's going to start with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please let's go see that again and put those hands together for Jesus if you can. I want to believe that God knew, he knows that you are going to be coming, you're going to be in this meeting, or you're going to be watching anywhere, and that is why this word is coming your way today. I'm bringing us God's word, which I've captioned here as position for exploit. The theme of this month is, I'm born to do exploit. I'm born for exploit. Remember, one of the text scriptures for this month is in Daniel 11 verse 32. It's a day that do wickedly, shall he corrupt with flatteries, but the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. And from the beginning of this month, I told us some things. I said, behind the, the miraculous, there is always a hidden knowledge. Behind the miraculous or the supernatural, there is always a hidden knowledge. The people that do know their God, not those who are ignorant of God, they shall be strong because a fool have said in his heart that there is no God, but we know that there is God. Glory to God. Position for exploit. My text this morning is from Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Isaiah 8, verse 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of the host which dwelleth in Mount Zion I and the children he said what the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders but I like to read it again from the new living translation new living translation put it this way he said I and the children the Lord has given me have names that reveal the plans the Almighty has for his people. I and the children which the Lord has given me have names. Can somebody say have names? Names that reveal the plans the Almighty has for his people. There are names you hear that reveals poverty. Glory to God. But there are names also that reveals the plans that the Almighty has for his people. I and the children which the Lord has given me, we are men for signs, we have names, we are carriers of virtues, we are carriers of glory that reveals what the Almighty God has in stock for us. Exploits, we're told, means adventure. Exploit means an adventure. Exploit means a notable, memorable, or heroic act. A memorable, heroic act. But if you look at the word signs and wonders, he said they are meant for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are the same thing. A sign is the same thing as a wonder. A sign is a wonder. A sign is a miracle. A sign is a remarkable transaction, event or phenomenon. Your life is going to be a phenomenon. Your life will be a case study. That people will begin to study your life. It becomes a case study. Glory to God. People will study it. I've seen people that they went out, someone like Richard Branson. You have quite a lot of people who drop out 
from school i mean if you use human standard to measure them this once you end up saying they are a good for nothing people but at the end of the day what happens things turn around for the better and that is what god is doing for someone here but you see our case study in this service we're going to use the person of jesus for our case study can somebody say case study glory to god now i'll give you two accounts here while i was meditating i saw in the gospel of john chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 the bible made us to understand that uh one of the rulers of the leadership of the days of christ came to jesus said there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews so he was not just an ordinary personality he was a ruler a notable figure the same came to jesus by night and said unto him rabbi the word rabbi means teacher we know that thou art a teacher come from god on the line that word for no man can do these miracles and mind you while i was you know speaking down here looking at the word signs as a sign can be said to be what wonders or miracles so he came to jesus a notable public figure and said to him rabbi teacher we know how did they know we know that thou art a teacher come from god for no man can do these miracles or break it out no man can do these signs no man can do these wonders no man can do this exploit except god be with him so behind every great exploit in life is the finger of god no man can succeed i'm talking about true success here there are success that people you know venture into they exact their energy their strength their technical know-how that is okay there's nothing wrong about it but there's a dimension you know of, of exploit there's a dimension of breakthrough that comes from a man that there is no effort that, that, that favor brings it come on i said favor brings it and favor is going to bring yours this morning god was speaking to the children of israel he said, I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptian. In the sight, not in the, not in the secret. In the sight. That is this dimension of favor that I'm going to bring you away. It's going to be a notable one. I pray God that this season, let there be a notable visitation on your life. That is notable that it cannot be hidden. It cannot be hidden. It's transparent. Everybody can see. And that is why in Acts chapter 4, in verse 16, it said, For indeed, a notable sign, a notable miracle has been done among these people, which cannot be what? Denied. Undeniable. Too real for people not to believe. I mean, it's too real. We know. Forget about what we are doing. Forget about what we are saying. We know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do this signs, no man can do this miracle, this wonders, except God be with him. That is why we want to use him as a case study. Also in the same John chapter 7, in verse 15, John 7:15, they were asking, How did this man learn? How did he go to know these things? Being that he didn't go to school. Can we have John 7, verse 15? And the Jews marveled after this service your life will become a marvel people will see you and they will marvel that is what happened to somebody who is a sign and a wonder people just wondered at you they may hate you they may speak evil against you in the secret but when they come before you what they just begin to smile at you they wonder how is it happening is it not the same business that we're doing is it not the same portacle that we're into how is it happening for this world and it's not happening for me the jews marvel saying how knoweth this man let us having never learned so thank god for the place of learning thank god for the place of schooling or school glory to god but there is a dimension that God will use to reveal you to your world that will make everyone around you to begin to marvel. Have you seen people when they see what is happening around you, they open their mouth. Look at me. That is what will begin to happen. Your adversaries, everyone around you, 
they can't explain it because it is beyond human comprehension. There's a dimension. He said, These people have I formed for myself, and they shall show forth my praises. Ah, uh, I formed them. The world disqualified them, but I have come to qualify them. I have come to pass them. I have come to tell them that they can. Moses said to God, I be not able. I'm a stammerer. I'm not qualified. God said, But I have qualified you. I came with the word for someone this morning here upon this mountain here, the God that rules in the affairs of men uh, qualifies you. Uh, I said qualifies you. Uh, prefers you than order. You shall be preferred than others. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. So can you see the reason why we need to use Jesus as a case study? He was a wonder to all. People marvel at him. It got to a point in the gospel of Mark chapter 6. The Bible is speaking about Jesus. We read from verse 2. The Bible says, And as he came to his hometown, he went into the synagogue, and the book was given to him, you know, to read. And as soon as Jesus came up, what happened? As he began to speak in the temple, what happened? The Bible says, look at it. It says, And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished. Remember, Luke told us, Luke 7.15, how did this man understand letters? He didn't go to school. He said, many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence have this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? That even such mighty works are wrought via his hands. Lift up those two hands. Say, from today, these hands are miracle hands. These hands begin to do great exploits. Small things are not permitted around me again. Great and mighty things. Through this ordinary hand, I begin to do extraordinary things. Whatever I lay these hands upon, I will prosper. I will excel. Nothing dies around me. Nothing finishes in this hand. In the mighty name of Jesus. So we want to look at Jesus as a case study. And I have three, three points I want to put in our hands this morning here. Position for exploit. What are the secrets of Christ? What are his secrets? The first one here. For you to be able to catch it in the dimension of Christ. Number one, catch his passion. What do I call it? Catch his passion. Glory to God. The word passion simply means the following. It means drive. It means desire. It means hunger. It means longing. It means thirst. It means urge. It means yearning to succeed. That was the secret of Christ. In John chapter 4, in verse 34, the Bible speaking, Jesus said to them, he said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. My meat, that word meat there simply means my passion, my desire is to do the do what? The will of him that sent me. Now look at me. Wherever passion is, the will to do will be at work. My passion, my drive, my desire, my longing is to do the will of him that sent me. You can only have the testimony of Jesus when you are able to catch his passion. Without catching his passion, you can have access to do the things that Jesus did here. Wherever you see passion, like I said, there will be the willingness to do or achieve something. It is impossible to achieve something great without passion. Passion. Passion can be likened to as the fuel or the vehicle that drives the vehicle that leads to greatness. Passion is needed. Whatever you are called to do here in life, if you lack passion, then you will be frustrated. You see people doing something that they don't like. They go to an office they don't like. They are doing a job that they don't like. No! What you need to keep you moving. Because we saw it. Jesus said, look, my secret is in my passion. 
my passion is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it passionate people are unstoppable you can't stop them from you know shining you can't stop them from getting their goal no matter the obstacle because they are passionate they are willing to run through troops they are willing to lift over wall passion keeps them going when others are said there's a casting down you hear passionate people say that there's a lifting up yes you may have fallen the bible says a righteous man or a good man falleth seven times but rises up again what brings you up is your passion now let me tell you this a man who has fallen and lack passion no matter the kind of prayer you pray for that man or that woman even if he rises up again the will to achieve will be there glory to god but if you've taken everything from a man that has passion, you took his money, took everything, but thank God you didn't take his passion, he will succeed. I see someone breaking through after the service here in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, even as important as healing is, healing, if you look at the ministry of Jesus, I know this that before healing takes place, one of the first things that goes forth is compassion. The word compassion is a compound word compounded passion compassion compounded passion i saw in scriptures in matthew 20 verse 34 jesus saw a people and he wanted to heal and the bible said he had compassion on them matthew 20 verse 34 he had what compassion on them so hear me so jesus had compassion on them and touch their eyes and immediately their eyes receive sight and they followed him so a prayer that is not prayed with compassion has no result <laughs> a prayer that is not prayed a word that is spoken from the head can only affect the head but the word that is spoken from the heart will affect the heart. This morning, I came prepared with words from my heart to affect the heart of someone here. I didn't come to speak to your head, but I came to speak to your heart. There's going to be a connection from my spirit man to your spirit man that will bring about a turnaround. Because my Bible says, he that walketh with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. Also in Luke 7, Luke 7 verse 13, the Bible says, and Jesus had compassion on her. Ha. Luke 7 verse 13, can we have it studio? And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. Can you see? He didn't tell her, weep not first before he had compassion. Compassion we always go compassion takes the lead are you hearing me now before there's any healing in any service any crusade one of the first things that is gone out is compassion if a man of god does not have compassion for the sick the power the healing virtue cannot flow praise the lord i say praise the lord that was the secret of jesus so we can bring it down even to whatever we are called to do if you are not passionate to what you are doing. I remember when we came here, the early days we came to Port Harcourt here. Stayed sitting by the road in the car. What kept me sitting in the car there was passion. I didn't know where we were going to get the hall. I didn't know. They don't even give us a place. But I would go drive. I park at the front of the place. When the sun is out, I pull my suit in the car. When the sun is too hot, I pull my tie. I wind down the glass. My books and my Bible is in the car. The car was just like the office. So people passing, going to work, they see me there. When they are coming back from work again, they see me there. When people are closest from work, me too, I prepare to close. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, my meat my secret my drive is to do the will of him that sent me when you see somebody who has a business and the desire is not here if there's no passion you can go to the office you go to your shop by 10 o'clock you go by 11 o'clock because it's your own and because the drive is not there but someone who has a drive for what you are called to do as early as 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you're on your way to the office. Praise the Lord. 
on your way to the office. The question is, if you are working for, there are even others who work for individuals. They work for people they don't like the work, but they have no choice but to go very early, or else they will sack them. If it's their own, they go anytime they feel us. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. He said, though your beginning may look small, maybe small, but your latter end shall greatly increase. Beginning is not your destination. Beginning is as the name implies. It's a beginning. Despise not the days of little beginning. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says a lot of hosts. We are thought of peace, not of evil. To give you an expected end. To give you. But before he can give you that end, he wants to see whether you are, you are able, you've been able to catch his passion. Have you been able to catch his passion? What is his heartbeat? What is his secret? Now, catching his passion is not enough. That brings us to number two. Share his burden. Share his what? His burden or burden. We're told that passion is drive. Passion is what is uh, you, you know uh, the hunger, is longing, is thirst, is a desire. But what about body? When you hear the word body or burden, what does it mean? A burden is something that is carried. When you carry a load, you call it a burden. Is that true? A burden is something that is carried. A burden is commitment. A burden is obligation. It's responsibility. But here it is. Until you are able to catch his passion, you cannot carry his burden. Only those who are able to catch his passion are qualified to carry his burden. Those two brothers, they came to Jesus and they said, Lord, we want, uh, we, 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 there's something we desire. And Jesus said, are you sure this your desire is strong? What do you want? He said, we want one of us to sit by your right hand and one by your left hand. And Jesus said, are you able to drink of the cup that I'm going to drink and be baptized with the baptism I'm going to baptize with? And they say, yes, Lord. Jesus said, you can answer yes. But the truth is that that which has been prepared or that which is on ground is only meant for those whom it has been prepared for. Praise the Lord. Until you catch his passion, you cannot share in his word, in his burden. You can't carry his burden. There is a cup of baptism, or there's a baptism of labor. Glory to God. There's a cup of suffering. God did not only promise you a hundredfold of blessing, he also promised the same thing to persecution. The more the blessing is coming, the more the persecution will be there. Are you hearing me? So don't only be desiring the blessing to come, persecution will also come. But God says he's faithful. He said he will not allow you to suffer in what you're going through. He will also make a way of escape. Can someone say way of escape? Glory to God. I say glory to God. Now look at this. Prayers, service, giving are all burdens that can only be placed upon those who are first of all passionate. If you are not, if you are, if you have not been able to catch his passion, then you cannot share in his body. Look at me. The place of prayer should go beyond just from your head. It should flow from your heart. <laughs> because God is not asking. He said, my son, give me your heart. It's your heart is asking for. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made. So not everyone who is in church talking is actually praying. Some are just moving their mouths. <laughs> But if you are praying indeed, you will know. You don't need a prophet to tell you. That is why at the end of the day, you can declare and say, this is a confidence we have. How many of us here after praying, any day you pray, any time you pray, you, you, are, you, you, you can be proud of using that word, this is a confidence I have. This time I pray. You know why? Because some, their own is from their head. Whereas some is from their heart. But I pray for you today. That because you are set to catch his passion, you begin to share in his burden. I said you begin to share in his burden. I said you will share in his burden. Now I saw in Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. The Bible said my little children of whom I travail in birth. Again 
until Christ perform in you. My little children, in whom I travel again in birth until Christ. Can you see the process? So it's not enough for you to catch his passion. It's not enough for you to desire his passion. Amen. But it is very important for you to do what? To do what? To share in his body. And the only way you can share in his body is for you to go through the process. My little children of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Two individuals who use the same scriptures but they may get different results. Because one has allowed the scripture to have taken a place in them. The scripture has taken her root in you. So when you are talking, you are talking from, from the dimension of someone who has allowed the word of God to have taken his root. The psalmist says, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the councils, verse Psalm 1, verse 1. Not selling the ways of sin and not sin the seat of the scuffle. But his delight always, not sometime, in good times, in bad times, is in the law of his God. In need that he meditate day and night. Can you see the word meditate? So the place of meditation will help the world in you to take root downward. As you are meditating, what happened? The world begins to gain stability in you. So that even when the wind, the storms of life, that is why Matthew 7 in verse 24, he said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, shall be likened to us what a wise man that builds his house upon a rock. So the place of meditation helps you to gain stability and everything around your heart becomes like a rock because the world has gained stability. So what will make others to throw in the towel will make you to still stand your ground and still be saying, I still believe God. In the midst of tears, I still believe God. In the midst you know, of breakdown, I still believe God. So people who speak like that are not coming you know, from the dimension of their head. They are coming from somewhere because the world had taken root down in them. And they said, my little children in whom I travel, Galatians uh, 4 verse 19, I travel in but he said until Christ be formed in you can somebody say until so it doesn't happen overnight it's a process that is why Jesus said come unto me all of you that what labor and a heavy laden come and you shall do what find rest unto your soul he said, come and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely of heart. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. He said, when you come, you shall find rest unto your soul. So when you come, it's not enough to come. You will come and sit. Jesus said, make them to sit down. And when you come, you prepare to learn. We have a generation who are not willing to learn again. In Proverbs 1, verse 5, he said, can, can we have one Proverbs 1, verse 5, please? A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So there's a place of hearing and you wait until you understand. Hearing alone is not the same thing as understanding. We, we, we should not deceive ourselves that everybody who is hearing right now understand. No, you hear and allow yourself to get to the place of understanding. That's why I say faith comes by hearing and hearing. By the word, there are some messages you need to hear and hear again. There are times even after preaching, I also sit down to listen to my own message. And there are some things I hear me say, I say, did I say this thing? And there are some things I hear me say that also blesses me. Glory to God. So it's not enough just for me to preach, but also at times I sit down, I hear my messages. I hear it to build me, to gain stability. Glory to God. In whom I travel in but until Christ be formed, until there is a change. So you don't just use your head and say, I cannot be sick. You get to a place, you have allowed the word of God to have taken root downward before you can bear fruit upward. The root, I mean, the word has taken place in you. For, for instance, in the gospel of John chapter 1, in verse 12 and verse 14, verse 12 says, As many that receive him to them give him power to become the sons of God. 
Wonderful. But uh, verse 14 says, let's have verse 14. Look at it. And the word was made flesh and dwelled among us. Glory to God. The word was made flesh. Jesus Christ, the word of God, became flesh here on earth. Is that true? He came down here, he became flesh. He took upon him the form of what? A servant, a form of the human. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten son or the begotten of the father full of grace and glory. So Jesus, every time you sit to read the word of God and you spend time to meditate before you know what is happening, the word of God we begin to look for a place in you. And once the word of God is able to get a place in you, the word now becomes flesh. Glory to God. So whosoever that needs Jesus or that is looking for Jesus, looking for the word, once they get in contact with you, they have met with Jesus. Glory to God. So inside the world are virtues. In the gospel of John chapter 6, God's word made us understand in verse uh, 64 thereabout. He said, it is 64, no, give me 63, John 63, please, 63, can we have 63? It is a spirit that quickened the flesh, profited nothing. Okay, the spirit that quickened the flesh, does what? Profited nothing. He said, the words that I speak unto you, what are they? They are spirit and they are life. So behind the word of God is the spirit of God. So every time you receive the word of God, you are not just receiving the letters, you are also receiving the rema. There's a spirit behind the word. He said the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So when you allow the word to gain access into you, what happened? Then the spirit that is behind the world is also at work in you. So you can now speak boldly in Romans chapter 8 in verse 11. He said, if the spirit, can we have Romans 11? Verse, Romans 8, 11, please. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him, the raised of Jesus from the dead, dwelt in you. He said, he that raised of Christ from the dead shall also do what? Quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The spirit is dwelling in the world that is in you. <laughs> so it's not just the spirit coming to dwell. You see, when you, when you lack the world, you also lack the spirit. Not that the anointing is not there. But you see, there's a dimension that someone can walk with the anointing. There's a dimension that somebody can walk with the presence. That's why I say, he that dwells in the secret place of the, of the Most High. Praise the Lord. So when, when your word level begins to reduce, what happens? It will also affect the anointing. It will affect the anointing. The anointing is in measure. So when the word level, when your word increase, the word is, in, when you increase the word level in your life, you discover the anointing in you will also increase. That is why scripture said, let the word, Colossians 3 verse uh, 16, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. Now receive grace this morning to let the word dwell in you. I said receive grace to allow the word to dwell in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, 16, not 15. 3.16, Colossians 3. Praise the Lord. Also, look at it in Psalm 69 verse 9. 69 verse 9. It says, For the seal of thy house had eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach them have fallen upon me. Look at me, everybody. This is a dimension. The seal of compassion the seal of thy house had eaten me up and the reproaches of them that reproach thee have you seen people who are not qualified to talk to you i mean they insult you and there is somebody somebody who said if it were those days when i've not met with jesus i will have shown you something you've noticed this like that people can insult you you want to preach and they say, get out here, stupid pastor. Ah! And something in you say, and, and you want to allow stupid to go? And you begin to squeeze your, your fist, amen. And you just remember, you're a servant of God, amen. And you relax yourself. Now you discover that the reproaches of them that reproach thee are falling upon me. 
seal we make you seal for God we make you to overlook so many things you know why when Jesus Christ was with him to Golgotha after they took him before Pilate the soldiers they slap him they did some things they say prophesy he was standing here some people will slap him now prophesy which of us slap you did all manner spat on him and Jesus was looking at them does it mean that he wouldn't have called you know and called angels from heaven he, he, he would have he has what it takes to do that praise the Lord but you could see him that he had to go through those things and today Jesus is not here physically again we represent him he paid a price he came as a seed Verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone, but if it die, it shall bear forth much fruit. So through the dead, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have all of these Jesuses. Glory to God. When a man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. So whosoever, Jesus said, greater works than this shall ye do also because I go to the Father. I am going to give you space. You are going to be in charge to continue in the place of manifestation. You are the one that is going to continue from where I stop. Do I have a witness here this morning? Praise the Lord. So who saw that is looking for Jesus? When they see you, they should see. Look at me. There should be something different. Even in the days of Christ, he is the word of God, the son of God. Do while he was here too, he also experienced needs. So there's nothing new. I've heard people say, why is it that bad things happen to good people? Why is it that with all the things I do, I go to service, I pray, I attend prayer meetings, I, pay, I do all of this, and look, my expectation has not yet come. There was a day I saw Jesus ask his disciples in the Gospel of John, when do we buy bread that this may eat? So there was a need. And the disciples, they look around, they say, look, there's nothing here. Let's drive them. They should go to the houses and eat and come back. And Jesus said, no, give them to eat. And they said, look, there's no amount of bread. This food, they are too much. Only men. We are not even counting women and children. I know in every church, any crusade, men, women and children are majority. So when they say men are 7,000, you should know that women should be around 20 something thousand. Children should be maybe 15,000. Praise the Lord. They only counted men. And the disciples were talking from the place of statistics. They said, Lord, we understand what we are saying. We will just say, embarrass. They should go to their house. Jesus said, no. What do we, we must do something. And thank God in the place of the need. They said, there's a lad that has five loaves. And how many fishes? Two fishes. In every situation, in every lack, in the midst of every lack and need, there's always a lad nearby. There's always a lad nearby. There's always somebody that is carrying that is carrying what belongs to you. What that next miracle you desire is in the hands of somebody. It can be a man with mustache. It can be a married woman. But this morning we call them a lad. Praise the Lord. When do we buy bread? They said there's a lad here. To pay house rent, they needed money. And when those tax force people came, governor, we get tax force people, they came, they've been existing since, oh, since Bible days, amen they came to scatter things and Jesus said, Peter whom did they collect tax from strangers or from their children, is it from strangers they are the children free, but for us not to be embarrassed, go to the sea there was a need there was no cash at that point, Jesus a whole Jesus the one that says a word that everything was created by his word he will have just said money but he cannot break his word too there are processes as they go to the sea the realm of the supernatural and peter went he said throw your hook the first fish you catch open the belly you will find money money so jesus had needs but he didn't allow that to teeter to tamper with his belief glory to god so we must try and catch his passion and not only that before we will be able to share in his passion and sharing his passion is not usually easy there are people that will insult you like i said the reproaches that were to come on him is coming on you right now you go out to preach you are talking to people they insult you 
But if you really understand where you are standing, you won't allow those insults to have a place in you. Glory to God. It's a sign of maturity. How do you know that you are growing in the faith? Praise the Lord. Look at this. John 2 verse 17. John 2 17. And his disciples remember that it was written, the seal of thy house had eaten me up. His disciples remember. What will you remember this morning? What are you remembering right now? His disciples remembered. The problem with this generation is that we have forgotten. A lot have forgotten. We forget things so quick. They remember that it was written. So they were also students of the word. Yes, all the New Testament may not have been there, but it was later on that they now remember. You see, and the, the disciples remember that it was written. Written where? In the Old Testament, the seal of thy house had eaten me up. Where we read in Psalm 69, verse 9, the seal of thy house. So they could see that seal. Passion was his secret. Seal is also known as passion. Will make you go all out in becoming a burden bearer. If you have seal, you'll be willing to go all out to become a burden bearer. Philippians 3, verse 10 to 14. Philippians 3, 10 to 14. Paul speaking. That I may know him. Paul was a celebrated lawyer in his days. But Paul did not settle. You have Christians, after speaking in tongues, they felt that they can't learn anything again. But Paul was somebody who was ready to learn, open to learn. He said that I may know him. The, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. People only want to experience the power of resurrection. Not everybody wants to go through the fellowship of suffering. So when there's little suffering, they say, but why has God forsaken me? Paul say, I'm ready. He said, the fellowship of the suffering be made conformable unto his death. Next verse. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Next verse. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. Say, I will follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Next verse. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Someone here needs to forget the past failure. Forget about the disappointment last week. Forget about the delay. I forget about those things. I put them aside and I begin to do what? I reach in forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14, the last verse. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Never you get tired of pressing. Where you are right now is only good for now. But after now, there's something better. You need to press. Press in prayer. Press in your faith. Press in your sowing. Press in service. Press in dedication. Press in consecration. Press in holiness. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So there's something higher and better than where you are right now. Pressing will take you there. I say pressing will take you dear. The last point this morning, last point I want to put in our hand. What is the first one again I said? You catch his passion. Number two, you share in his burden. Now number three, manifest his glory. Glory to God. Manifest his glory. Until we understand his passion and share in his burden. And for your information, the word burden, dear, I talk about carrying something. Is that true? Burden can also be his love. Praise the Lord. In, in Romans 5.5, 5, Romans 5.5, 5, he said, Hope maketh not a shame, because the love of Christ is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Hope maketh not what? A shame, because the love of God, the burden of God is shared abroad like I said you can only share his burden when you are able to catch his passion so you find people who are passionate who have been able to catch his passion you see them sharing his burden sharing his love 
sharing the love of Jesus, talking to people, ministering to people. You have testimony, you are sharing to people for them to hear what God has done in your life. Until we understand his passion and share his burden, we cannot manifest his glory. Little children who have traveled until Christ be formed in you. So when Christ is formed in you, then what happens? You can now manifest his glory. The formation that is taking place in you is only preparing you to begin to manifest the glory. You cannot manifest what you don't have inside. Uh, there must be a formation inside of you that will bring about your manifestation as I close, Romans chapter 8 and verse 19 says, The honest expectations of the creation, they are waiting for the manifestation. You don't manifest what you don't, you, you know, carry a burden for. The burden that you cannot carry, you cannot manifest. Glory to God. The world is waiting for us. To manifest the glory of God. And that can happen, won't happen overnight. There are processes where you must get to the place of being able to catch his passion. And also you share his burden. When people see you just like they saw the apostles and disciples. And they call them Christians, which is Christ-like. They could see the like, the, 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 the life of Christ in them. Uh, you know, them sharing it all around them. Hallelujah. So until they see you, you know, uh, sharing his body, then what happened? That will bring you to the point whereby you begin to manifest his glory. What the world is waiting for is a manifestation. It is time for you to manifest. Manifest the glory of God. Manifest the grace of God. Manifest the hand of God. Manifest the goodness of God. Manifest the favor of God. Anyone who is looking for God, once they contact us, they have seen God. They will see God in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for someone here this day that just the same way they said about Jesus, we know that no man can do this. Now come out of the realm of how men function here on earth and begin to manifest your God nature in you. Let the God nature in you begin to come forth right now. Manifest excellent. Excellent is a product of the Spirit of God. No one operates below average here again. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus saw two boats, but he chose to enter into the boat of Peter because he knew that Peter needed a breakthrough. Scriptures didn't tell us the name of the other man, but he entered that of Peter. This morning I see God entering your situation. I see help coming your way. I see help entering your space, turning things around for the better, bringing about the goodwill that the heaven has in stock for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. I decree and declare that the good and the prophets of the earth comes for you and I. I decree and declare that goodness and mercy shall follow you uh, all the days of your life uh, and you will dwell uh, in the house of the Lord uh, I decree over you this day uh, that there's a release uh, a release uh, of the grace that causes you to catch his passion uh, begin to catch the passion uh, the passion that Jesus exhibited here on earth uh, not only will you catch his passion uh, the passion to pray uh, the passion to serve uh, the passion to steve uh, the passion for holiness, the passion for commitment, the passion for dedication, the passion, oh, in whatever area of your life, in the works of your head, receive grace to be passionate. Let there be compassion all around you in the mighty name of Jesus. And now that you are able to catch his passion, now begin to share in his body. Share in his body. Stand by the word. Stand on the word. Let the word of God 
continue to dwell in you in all wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus and as you are catching his passion and sharing his body I see you naturally manifesting the glory of God glory in your nation glory in your community glory in your family glory wherever you are walking I thought you were praying this morning lift up those two hands above your head and say Lord, let the glory, your glory, begin to manifest in my life. Glory in the place of shame. Glory takes over. No more shame, no more reproach, but the glory of God shall be seen by all. Madame Dose, Shekeda, Ariata, Alebra no seek Pariada. The glory of God, the glory of God is risen on my life, is risen on me. In the mighty name of Jesus, your two hands above your head. Every thing that is pushing your mind towards smallness. Is case this morning concerning Jesus, our case study. They say, From whence are this man this sin that such mighty wisdom, mighty arts, exploit are rotted? Beginning. Now, through your hands, in the mighty name of Jesus, every smallness mentality. Dies in you. Every mentality of poverty, of lack, and want is here by cross this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever that has covered your eyes, why you can't see big, you can't think big, you can't dream big, is here by destroy this morning. Now receive access to begin to see greatness, begin to see your glorious future, begin to see possibility, begin to see breakthrough, begin to see exploit, begin to see it right now. Doors are opening. Our God is making ways for someone where there seems to be no way. Are you the one right now? Come and show it, express it right now as you give God all the glory. I celebrate you, my God. I worship your majesty. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Glory to God. I'd like us to take this worship song. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I